Hello everyone, my name is Professor Friedrich Gerfers. I'm the head and director of the chair mixed signal circuit design from the Technical University of Berlin. Today I want to talk about Contistime Sigma Delta ADC, where we are able to correct for time variant and time invariant duct mismatch errors. So the outline of my talk is as follows. So I will start with some basics about Sigma Delta ADCs, and then I'll talk about um, multi-bit architectures, the pros and cons here. And then I will introduce an error model that uh, uh, reviews the DAC um, and the ADC multi-bit errors and based on that I will introduce a correction scheme how to correct uh, nonlinear errors of these DACs and finally give a short brief conclusion of my talk. So Sigma Delta architecture basically or Sigma Delta ADCs consists of a feedback loop where there is a multi-bit or single bit quantizer and a feedback loop that basically is able to noise shape the uh, quantization noise. So therefore uh, Sigma Delta benefits from two uh, um, features, oversampling and quantization. So due to the oversampling the quantization noise actually is shifted over the whole uh, Nyquist branch so that um, so that the decimation filter basically filters out most of the noise, so only that here in black showed error remains in the passband. However, due to the feedback loop, we have also a noise transfer function, so the noise that enters here at the quantizer will be noise shaped so that most of the quantization noise is even shifted to higher frequencies, so only that uh, error here or the area here in yellow remains in the passband, significantly improving the quantization uh, noise performance of the sigma delta. Furthermore, uh, continuous time sigma delta modulators feature an inherent anti-aliasing filter because uh, before in, or in front of the sampler here we have a continuous time filter which acts as an anti-aliasing filter for the whole system improving the power consumption of an overall um, receiver here. And in terms of quantization errors, let's say multi-bit quantizers uh, have a significant benefit, benefit because they reduce the quantization uh, noise by itself. Every additional bit reduces the quantization noise by 6 dB, improving the signal to quantization uh, noise performance even further. However, we need not only a quantizer uh, here, also a multi-bit DAC, which you can see here, which is consisting of unit elements to show a high-level architecture of such a multi-bit DAC. What are the benefits? As I already mentioned, quantization noise is improved, and since we have a linear transfer function of the quantizer, which is well behaved, also the loop stability will improve. On top of that, since we have a significant improved quantization noise performance, we can reduce this. the oversampling ratio, which relaxes the uh, integrator requirements in terms of slew rate and settling behavior, which in turn reduces the power consumption even further. On top of that, since we have a multi-bit quantizer, we can also think about reducing the loop filter uh, order, which in turn reduces the number of components, which reduces the silicon area requirements, and on top of that re uh, reduces the power consumption. And this is not only holding for the analog, but also for digital decimation, decimation filter, because they are uh, going um, one by one. However, what happens here since we have a multi-bit quantizer, errors are introduced because they are, have a certain nonlinearity. So I marked these errors with an ADC quantization or ADC nonlinearity error introducing the loop here and the DAC error which is basically added here in the system at the feedback loop. However, if we look at the error from the ADC, we see that we have a filter in front of that such that the errors from the ADC are highly alternated and therefore is in usually not a significant problem for multi-bit quantization. However, the DAC error here, which is can be modeled actually an, in, as an additional input signal which is in parallel to our actual ADC input signal and therefore we cannot distinguish the error from our actual input signal and therefore this error has to be small enough according to the whole resolution of our sigma delta ADC. Which means that for example if we have a 16-bit sigma delta ADC this stack needs to be 16-bit uh, linear or even better in order to not limit the overall performance of such an ADC. Usually in state of the art we have data averaging techniques to overcome these problems but as already mentioned multi-bit architectures can use low oversampling ratios and therefore the benefit from the data averaging will not take place and therefore is not a solution here. Other alternative architectures basically use an analog correction where we have an additional duck here in the feedback that tries to correct for these nonlinear errors introduced by these uh, nonlinear elements here. However, we need an additional duck and timing requirements and accuracy requirements are so high if we talk about, for example, 16-bit that this is uh, not a real uh, nice solution and it's still bulky because we need an additional duck for each cell here. 
a more advanced uh, technique, which is basically also taking advantage for our approach here. We use a digital correction where we basically have an additional uh, DAC here that models the nonlinear behavior here, such that we have a multi uh, transfer function transferring the error to the output such that we have the same error here added to the output, subtracting it from the output and therefore linearizing the whole system. And this is already state of the art. So if we look at the usual problems, uh, let's say we can see here, since we have a continuous time integral uh, sigma delta modulator, we are interested in the total charge per clock cycle. So that means the total area here is what is injected in the feedback loop. And if you look at the different unit cells, we can see that they are deviating from each other, meaning the actual current amplitude here is varying from cell to cell, introducing an error here, for example, epsilon 1 here. And since we have errors, they will cause nonlinearity. And that's something that was already corrected in state of the art, as you will see in the next slides. So, and I'm assuming for now here that the, the sampling periods are perfect. However, you can also model this as a constant current, but varying the, the timing uh, ends up in the same problem. And furthermore, let's say uh, you, we can correct uh, instead of the, uh, these errors using a reference cell as a, um, as a cell that we all match all current sources to it. However, the only remaining error will be an overall gain error, which will slightly affect the ma maximum stable amplitude. However, the linearity is still nicely remained. And how is that corrected? You can see here, if we are able to basically model these errors from these current sources with an actually matched uh, C level here, that's C1 to Cn. And if we can calculate these Cns, we can multiply that with the transfer function and correct the output uh, at uh, the sigma delta output. And the goal is so that we match here our uh, digital model here with uh, the actual errors and such that we multiply this with the transfer function. And we can see here that the error transfer function from the epsilon output to the, to the final sigma delta output is actually the signal transfer function, except that is uh, negative terms because of the negative feedback. So therefore, we can see here the signal transfer function. And if we do so, we are able to correct in state of the art our errors. However, let's say besides these um, static errors, we have also dynamic errors. If we look at the, the real transition of a DAC signal, we see that we have different delays and we have different slew rates. And therefore, it's not just a static error, we have data dependency. That means if we have a signal transition from a minus one to a one, we have here a slope and a potential delay. If we have a no transition, we see that we have only a static error, whereas we have a falling edge, we see that we have a different delay and potentially a different slew rate. So therefore, depending on our uh, data and depending on our model, we can either have two coefficients if we have just different slopes or the delays, and if we have different delays and different slew rates, we end up with having three different coefficients. And these are data dependent, meaning depending on the previous and the current sample. This is shown here as a model for the two coefficient case where we have a fixed delay but a different slew rates. And you can see here that, let's say, if we have a zero to one transition, we see that we have an additional uh, uh, charge error, whereas if we have no transition here, only the absolute static error will remain. So therefore, our model is improved or uh, enhanced so that we have each of our current cells have two coefficients, one constant for the uh, no transition or one transition based, which is looking at the um, previous and current data and decides if we pick one of these coefficients. So the question now becomes how we can estimate these errors. So how we do this? So we add basically an extra current cell shown here in blue. And basically, that is replaced in the feedback DAC. And we take every time one of these cells out and inject here a PRBS sequence that basically gets correlated at the output. So that means we inject here a PRBS sequence. And in order to characterize both the um, static one, we use a low update rate uh, PRBS, and if we want to analyze the time, de time dependent, time variant uh, error, we use a high switching uh, sequence here. And we use a cross correlation at the output in order to measure all these errors and basically correct uh, later in the digital domain our errors. And of course, we have to do this for each cell. So that means after the first one is calibrated and measured, we swap the, the cell back in and then use the second cell as in PRBS sequence and then analyze the output for the second one. And this will be one full iteration. And after that, we are running a couple of iterations to just settle the perfect performance. So in order to prove this architecture, we have also a test vehicle, which is shown here. We use a fourth order sigma delta modulator. And uh, in this case here, a 4-bit quantizer. So that means we end up with 110 dB idle quantization noise performance. 
And uh, this is, of course, uh, a simulation result here. So we use uh, a background calibration. So that means we have a sine wave coming in with a quarter of the full scale amplitude. And if we use sufficient number of points, we are able to calibrate fully the sigma delta back. Assuming we have an error, let's say, floor that we want to get close to our 110 dB uh, SNDR. So here you can see the final simulation results. So in the first three iterations, we just used the time invariant uh, estimation of the static error. And you can see already, we see after the inje error injection, we end up with just 60 dB SN, uh, SQNR performance. And after the first iteration, we see already approximately a 30 dB increase in performance. And after three further improvement uh, iterations, we see that we settle approximately to 90 dB SNDR, and we are limited by the time variant errors. And after we switch uh, corroborating also the time variant errors, we almost get back to our perfect performance. In this case here, we have 103 dB, 103 dB uh, S and SQ and R, and that means we have just 6 dB less compared to the perfect idle uh, performance. And this is the fact due to the fact that we have used our own sigma delta modulator to measure these errors, and therefore we have a certain error flaw that we cannot uh, get to the perfect uh, 110 dB performance. This brings me also to a final conclusion. So first, we have discussed, generally speaking, the Sigma Delta ADC architecture, talked about these errors in multi-bit architectures. We proposed a mathematical model that uh, shows these errors in the system and so that we are able to estimate and analyze the errors in the feedback system. And we saw that we have time variant and time invariant data errors here. And basically, that means we are depending on the previous and current sample to pick the right co uh, correction coefficients. We proposed for the first time um, a time variant correction so that we are not just correcting the static error, but also dynamic errors. And with this um, estimation, we are able to bring back almost a perfect performance in such multi-bit sigma delta modulators. Thank you very much for your attention. And I hope you could see, let's say, what calibration uh, en enhances in sigma delta ADC.